Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is my NXL ITCC exam series. This is number 39, Venn Diagrams, and I'm recording this on Halloween, and that's why I've got the orange lights in the background. So if you hear any screaming, that is from the trick-or-treaters outside, and it's not the person locked up in my basement. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Right, Venn Diagrams, let's go. So, um, we have these um, subjects, and we need to fill in this Venn diagram, it looks like. Um, uh, so, um, let's get let's get straight to it. It does say here that let X be the number of students who study French only, so they've already put that in the Venn diagram for us. Um, and it says that, I mean, the best place to start is the center, always the center. So do we have information on the center? Yes, we have that free study all, uh, four study all free. So put four in the center and then just cross it off. So I'll cross it off by highlighting. Um, so you know you've used that bit of information. Um, okay, then it says 10 study Russian and French. So the temptation is to put 10 here, but that would not be correct because then the people that study Russian and French will be all these people and that would make 14 and it wouldn't make 10. So instead we've got to put six here so that this section adds up to 10. Perfect, okay, now we could say that 13 study French and German. So by the same logic, we're not gonna put 13 here, we're gonna put instead nine, so that when it adds to the four, it makes 13. And six study Russian and German, um, so over here is gonna be two to make six. Okay, and now it says that 24 study German, which means this whole circle here needs to add to 24. So um, just being really lazy, 24 minus two, minus four, minus nine, and that gives us nine. So nine is left over uh, for only, uh, uh, people who only study German. Okay, um, and next it says that uh, 11 study none of the three uh, subjects. So 11 needs to go on the outside there. Um, giving you your number of answers an appropriate subset in terms of X where necessary. Okay, ah, this final bit of information. The number who study Russian only is twice the number who study French only. Fine. So that means this in here is 2X because as it says, the number of people who study Russian only, so that is this little subset here, is twice the number who study French only, which is X, so 2X. Lovely. Okay, given that the number of students who were asked uh, the question was 80, work out the number of the students that study Russian. Okay, well we need to do a little um, calculation, don't we? because 80 is the sum of all of the people uh, inside the Venn diagram. Uh, so let's add up all of them. So there's X and there's 2X. So we know that makes 3X when we add those up. Plus there's 6, there's 4, there's 2, there's 9, and there is 11, and there's 9 again. So those are all of the other ones. So let's just add those up. So we've got 6 plus four, plus two, plus nine, plus 11, plus nine, and that gives us 41. Okay, great. So we can say that 80 is equal to three X plus 41. Subtract 41 from both sides, gives me 39 is equal to three X. Dividing through by three gives me X is equal to 13. But that's not the end of the story because I wanna work out the number of people that study Russian. So, <clears throat> Uh, going back to our Venn diagram, um, I'll write in here, uh, that because x is 13, that is now 26, um, and that is 13. But the people that study Russian are all the people in this circle. So we'll add those up. We'll do 26 plus 6 plus 4 plus 2, and that equals 38. So the answer is 38. And what I would do is I'll do that calculation just in case I've made a mistake in some of the numbers and I want to get my method marks. Okay, on to the next one. A very similar drill here. Um, so 
um, as the previous question, we're going to fill in the Venn diagram. We're going to start with um, the centre. Uh, and we're told that the number of students who pass all three tests is X. So X goes in the centre. Um, and then we're going to work out the ones that have done uh, two. Um, oh, well, why not? Let's just work upwards. Because four failed all three, so four goes on the outside. Um, Eleven students passed... Uh, both maths and French. So again, it's tempting to put 11 in here, but that wouldn't be correct because then that would mean that 11 students plus X pass maths and French. So in fact, what we need to put in here is 11 minus X because that way, when I look at all of these people, which are all the people that have studied, uh, have passed maths and French, when you add those together, that makes 11 now, which is what we want. Okay, uh, so next one, it says 18 uh, studied uh, past maths and English. So again, by the same logic, this will be 18 minus X. So the, that uh, section here will add up to 18 when you add them together. Um, and then next, it says that 14 uh, passed um, the test in French. Okay. Um, so that means that uh, what's going to go here, well, in the whole of French, I need this to make 14 in total. Now when I add these up, um, I get 11 minus x plus x plus 2. So the minus x and the plus x cancel out, so I just get 13. So I need an extra 1 to make a total of 14. Okay, uh, and now the same thing for English. Uh, it's going to add to 20. Um, when I add everything inside this circle here, uh, that needs to add to 20. The x is the x and the minus x will cancel out. You've got 18 and 2 already, so 0 uh, in that section will make 20 total. Um, okay. Um, and then it says, well, 25. Um, studied um, <clears throat> uh, maths okay great so it says use all the information about the results uh, who passed the test I probably should have read the question first to find the value of X fine so because it said that 25 studied maths it means that this circle needs to add to 25 so 25 is equal to 3 plus 11 minus X plus X plus 18 minus X Okay, great. So we can simplify this. Um, we've got here a minus x and a plus x. They will cancel. We've got 3 plus 11 plus 18, uh, which is a total of um, 32. And then a minus x as well. Okay, so minusing 32 from both sides gives me minus 7 is equal to minus x. So therefore, x is equal to 7. Bosh. Okay, <clears throat> it says use your value of x to complete the Venn diagram to show the number of students in each subject. Oh, what a strange question. I've kind of like already done that. Why are you asking me to do it again? Anyway, um, we've got 0, 2, 1, 4. So I'm just literally just copying these in now. 0, uh, 2, uh, 1, and now 4 there. And then these are all the ones um, that had an x in. Uh, and because x is 7, we've got 18 minus x. So 18 minus 7 is 11. We've got x, which is 7, and we've got 11 minus 7, which is 4. So it was 11, 7, and 4. Bosh. Um, and then a student who passed the test in maths is chosen at random. Okay, so before I even read the rest of the question, I'm only looking at all of these people because we're told that the student passes uh, in maths. So these are all the people which we need to look at. Find the probability that this student failed the test in French. Okay. Um, so if they failed the test in French, it means they were not part of the people who passed the test in French. So I'm now just looking at um, um, this person and this person. These are the ones that failed French because they're not in the French circle. So it's 11 plus 3 is the total number of people out of 
11 plus 3 plus 4 plus 7. So that's 14 people. And then all the people that pass maths is going to be 18, 22, 25. So the answer is 14 out of 25. Okay, uh, next question. We've got 100 farmers and they have sheep, goats and chickens on their farms. Okay, it says use the information, complete the Venn diagram. Okay, so we're going to start as always in the centre and we're going to cross off each bit of information as we're done. So six in the centre. Okay, you go there. Um, I can also see here, this is an easy one, 20 do not have um, en uh, any animals, so that goes on the outside, I can put it here. Um, and then we have 18 have goats and chickens. So again, it'd be tempting to put 18 in here, but then it would not mean that the section of goats and chickens, which is all of these guys, adds up to 18. So instead, we need to take away six to make 12 here, so that section does add up to 18. Okay, um, so that's goats and chickens. Sheep and chickens need to be 17. So sheep and chickens needs to be 17. Take away the six means 11 goes in there. Um, 11 for sheep and goats. Take away the six means I'll need to have put five in that section. <clears throat> um, and then we've got 53 for chickens and 31 for sheep. So I'll just write it here. 53 for chickens and 31 for sheep. Okay, fine. So if I look at that chicken section, um, I know that there's 53 in total, but I've already got 12, I've already got 6, and I've already got 11. So 24 is missing. And for sheep, I've got 31, but I've already got 6, 11, and 5. So that's 9 goes in there. And then finally, um, I'm pretty sure there's 100... Um, yeah, 100 farmers were asked, so therefore to find the final section we can just do 100, subtract all of the bits which are filled out. So 20, 5, 9, 6, 11, 12 and 24. And that's 13. Beautiful. Okay, next it says find the number of elements in G. Well, G is this circle here. So how many elements are in there in total? So it's 13 plus 5 plus 6 plus 12, 36. Easy. Um, and then, oh, it's a bit trickier. Uh, the union of G and S. Okay, so I will colour that in so we're clear what that is. So the union of G and S, let's start with that first. Um, the union of G and S will be everyone in G or anyone in S. So if you're in G or S, you're part of the union. So all of these guys are in the union because they're either in G or they're in S, or some of them might be in both. But this thing here, this symbol, this little dash, that means the complement. So it means the complete opposite. So we're looking at all the people which are not in the union of G and S. So all the people, or people, animals, whatever, that have not been shaded is 20 and 24, so a total of 44. Okay, great. Um, next one, so we've got an intersection. So both of these two sets need to intersect. So we've got not G and we've got C. And I'll be able to colour them in both in fact, I'll colour one in um, yellow and one in blue so that the intersection will be green because it's where the two sets intersect. So not G needs to be coloured in blue first. Okay, so I can do that. Um, okay, so there we go. That's not G is coloured in blue. And then the other one is C. That needs to be coloured in yellow. So if I colour in C in yellow, like so, you can see where these two sets intersect because it turns it green, because green and blue, sorry, yellow and blue make green. Fantastic. 
So it's the green section, um, which is 11 and 24. So 11 plus 24 is 35. Lovely. Okay, so it's one of the farmers uh, who has chickens is chosen at random. So I go back up here, and now I'm only looking at the chicken peep, uh, farmers, so it's these guys. Uh, find the probability that this farmer also has goats. Okay, so the ones that are chicken farmers and have goats are these guys. So it's 12 plus 6, which is 18, out of all of the chicken farmers. So it's 12 plus 6 over 12 plus 6 plus 11 plus 24, I believe. Yes, perfect. So <clears throat> that is 18 over um, 12, I probably should do this in my head, plus 6, plus 11, plus 24, 18 over 53. Beautiful. And I think that is a wrap. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now. Happy Halloween.